Thank you, Ms. Mansour. I'm very honored to be asked to discuss this topic, which has been following me for the last uh, 15 years or so, my association with the CDA and diabetes and heart disease. So, first of all, these are my disclosures. So first, before we get into my presentation, the question. Do you prescribe or recommend the prescription of glucose-lowering drugs? Which answer best describes you? Yes, and I feel comfortable doing so. No, I do not, and I do not believe that I should. I may recommend certain diabetes drugs for the primary care physician or endocrinologist to consider, but do not prescribe them myself. Or four, I think I should be prescribing them myself, but do not know enough about them and don't feel comf confident doing so. So if you can vote on that, please. A perfect combination for an educational program like this. So we have 38% uh, who are comfortable in prescribing glucose-lowering drugs, and we have 46% who think they should be doing so, but need more education before they will do that. Wonderful. So I think we have some who are clearly uh, active in this uh, area. And, and then there are others who are doing the intermediate by rec making recommendations. So diabetes is an area which cardiologists have been somewhat cynical about whether control of diabetes has any impact on cardiovascular disease. In fact, Miles Fisher, who's a cardiologist from Glasgow, said that diabetes is a state of premature cardiovascular death, which is associated with hyperglycemia and may be also associated with blindness and renal failure. Cardiologists have some concerns about being involved in diabetes management. First of all, as I've said, the impact of glucose control on cardiovascular disease is somewhat arguable. Uh, the primary trials and the initial uh, four to five years of the follow-up largely have shown no reduction of cardiovascular disease. However, the long-term follow-ups of these trials, uh, certainly two of them, if not three of them, have shown a reduction. Physicians are concerned about adverse effects, and with glucose-lowering drugs, naturally, they're concerned they might cause hypoglycemia. Cardiologists particularly say, I've had absolutely no training in the management of diabetes, and I point out that that is a limitation imposed by the Royal College in which diabetes does not come mentioned once in the curriculum. Uh, there's been, the cardiologists will say, I haven't got time to follow up these patients with multisystem disease or after I prescribe. And then they're concerned that somebody else is looking after their diabetes, and so a turf sensitivity is one of their excuses. But then they say, well, diabetes is a multi-system disease, and I certainly don't want to be involved in foot care. But I would argue that the central role of a cardiologist is in the prevention of cardiovascular disease, and I believe that in 2018, this includes in the, evol the involvement in diabetes management, not only in risk factor reduction, but also the appropriate use of drugs which have been proven to reduce cardiovascular events. Diabetes kills people early. This is uh, from the Emerging Risk Factors Collaboration, and you can see that an individual with diabetes aged 60 will live six years less than somebody who doesn't have diabetes. Now, if this patient has already had a myocardial infarction, his life expectancy will be 12 years less. We could expect the 60-year-old will live beyond 80. So this poor fellow is only going to survive until 68, a substantial reduction in life expectancy. Heart failure has a huge impact on cardiovascular outcomes, and this is some data in the placebo group of the Empereg outcome trial, 
And you can see that heart failure hospitalization and heart failure investigator reported, uh, the incidence is, if you put them together, uh, 2.7 per 100 patient years in the placebo group, whereas the vascular complications, the vascular events that we saw, were only 2.8, so 3.7. So you're seeing more heart failure than you are myocardial infarction or stroke. Then after these patients present with these conditions, the cardiovascular mortality is substantially greater in patients who have a heart failure presentation. You see around about 20% as opposed to 16 or 3.8%. And the proportion of patients with cardiovascular death following an event is also very high in patients with heart failure, around about 25% as opposed to 21% in non-fatal infarct infarction. And when we look at the absolute numbers of deaths over the course of the Empereg outcome trial, and remember, this is not a heart failure trial. Only 10% had a history of heart failure, and uh, it certainly wasn't a trial looking specifically at heart failure. But you can see that the patients who had a heart failure hospitalization or reported by the investigator to have heart failure, 61 of pa those patients died as opposed to 30 with a vascular event. So here's the case. 53-year-old patient from Southeast Asia, known diabetes for four years. Diabetes was diagnosed at the time he presented with his acute inferior wall infarct. He had a primary angioplasty to his right coronary artery, but had some disease in the left anterior descending artery. He had ma marginal reduction of ejection fraction with infrabasal akinesis. His blood pressure was slightly elevated. His A1C was reasonably well controlled. And his creatinine was 135 with an EGFR of 53, and he had proteinuria. He was obese. Uh, he smoked one pack of cigarettes per day. His medications that he's taken uh, since the myocardial infarction include metformin, gliburide, torvastatin, atenolol, and ramipril. Now, the current issue is that he presents to his general practitioner with shortness of breath, with mild exertion, and has signs of congestive heart failure, uh, with an elevated J JVP, with crepitations, with peripheral edema. His weight hasn't gone down, despite the fact that he attended a rehab clinic, and he remains uh, significantly obese. His renal function has remained fairly static. Uh, his glucose control is relatively good, and his echocardiogram has not changed. He started on ferrosamide, and his symptoms improve, but he remains short of breath if he does exertion more than normal day-to-day -day activities. So the challenges in this 53-year-old is managing his risk factors. He hasn't stopped smoking. He's still grossly obese. Uh, his blood pressure isn't down to, uh, targeted, uh, to recommended targets. Then this patient has heart failure, so we need to uh, uh, manage it. Is this heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, despite the fact he's got a reduction of, uh, he's got uh, left ventricular hypokinesis due to the infarct? Maybe, well, Nadia can discuss that one. Uh, select diabetes medications with cardiovascular benefit. I think that's today extremely important because the benefit in this patient of an agent which uh, reduces cardiovascular events is probably as much as any of the heart failure medications. And then this patient has renal disease, and he needs his kidneys protecting. In terms of management strategies for the risk factors, smoking cessation, weight loss, and blood pressure control, optimizing heart failure medications, and because he was considered to have heart failure of preserved ejection fraction, he was started on a mineral a corticoid inhibitor, and then selecting medication with uh, cardiovascular benefit and heart failure benefit, and that's largely confined to the SGLT2 inhibitors. So glyburide was discontinued because his A1C was pretty close to target, and he was started on an SGLT2 inhibitor. Thank you. <laughs>